Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part three of my decision-making tutorial where I will go through completely how people make decisions to do things. And, of course, I am covering this decision-making process using the psychological mapping techniques of metaprogramming. I will not go over what metaprogramming is, so if you want to understand it better, please see part one of this decision-making tutorial, and then everything should make sense. Specifically, I'm going to cover all the ways we decide how we develop preferences and focus attention and what I'll do is I'll describe I was tested my meta program was defined and I will explain how I personally make decisions there are no wrong decisions by the way I will then explain all the different other ways of making decisions and then tell you the questions you should ask to find out specifically how a person makes decisions in each, each of these classifications now I'm going to go over direction style, meaning whether a person moves towards goals or away from problems. I definitely move towards goals rather than away from problems. The major problem for people like me is that we have a tendency to leave things unfinished. I luckily am able to avoid this problem because I know of my shortcomings and force myself to get things done or delegate them to others with the opposite personality. The problem for those who move away from problems is that they have a hard time making decisions because they always want to get everything just right. People with a move toward motivation talk a lot about their goals, achievements, gains, and wants. People People with an away from personality will talk about their problems, things to avoid, and values that keep them from doing certain things. If you want to know what a person is, just ask a person to list their goals and problems. Whichever list is longer will tell you which personality they have. Now I'll go over how people accomplish tasks. People are either recipe followers or gut instinct people. I'm a gut instinct guy. I always think things can be done better. This tinkering has benefited me at times and also made me hard to manage. Those managers that have just left me go on my own have made a lot of money off of me, and those that tried to put me in a box, well, didn't. The other personality type is great at performing very specific step-by-step -step directions. They will not enjoy directions like just figure it out. These are your perfect little worker bees, but they will struggle when they're forced to figure out something on their own. To find out which personality someone has, just ask them why they made a certain decision. If they talk about the new capabilities, possibilities, and empowerment they gained from this decision, they are gut instinct types. If they talk about how they performed research, asked others, etc., you're dealing with a recipe follower. Then you have how people adapt to changing situations. And there are the flexible and the controlling types. I definitely have a controlling attitude. I'm constantly planning how I'll get things accomplished. I do not take well to unexpected situations, but prefer to push problems out of my way to reach my goals. Other personality types drift through life with an easy come, easy go attitude. They have trouble making up their minds, planning, and getting things done quickly. You can find out which personality you're dealing with by asking a person if they like to plan things out or take things as they come. Then you have how people motivate themselves, either through reasoning or necessity. I have a reasoning personality. I do what I do because I want to. I like having the option to accomplish tasks in my own way. The other personality does what others think they should or what their personal values dictate. You can discover what personality type you're dealing with by asking what motivates you to go to work. If they respond that they have to or they would be in trouble, they act out of necessity. If they say they enjoy it, have a lot to accomplish, or need to get something done, you're dealing with a reasoning personality. Reasoning types are harder to manage, but if left on their own, will get things done. Necessity people respond well to force and follow the rules. People also have very specific interests in life, meaning either people, places, things, activities, or information. I'm most interested in information, as you would probably gather. I consume a large quantity of books and articles every day. I read and scan through 20 news websites and two books per day at least. My major issue in life is that I don't take my head out of the book long enough to experience the real world. Some people love to consume information about people. However, they don't like to be alone and may have trouble with gossiping. Others are interested most in different destinations. They live to go on trips and to experience the world. They may, however, have trouble fulfilling their obligations at home because they're constantly planning quests or questing. Many are most interested in random things. Here are your gadget people. They go through life with a thirst to buy or tinker with that which they just purchased. Their major issue in life is living beyond their means and ignoring regular people. Finally, we have those who see the world as a place to do things. They have one activity after another scheduled. They bounce around asking on what we're going to be doing and fear feeling bored. Again, they may have trouble meeting obligations in life. To find out what type of person you're dealing with, ask them what they enjoyed most about their vacation. 
Then you have your goal styles and how people set goals. You have your perfectionist, your optimist, and your pessimist. I love the whole idea of accomplishing things perfectly. I'm great at getting things done, but people with this style may have an issue of tinkering too much to the point that they never reach their goals. I've overcome that issue, but sometimes come off way too forcefully. An optimist approaches goals in a manner that thing will work out. They plan a little, but don't beat themselves up or others if things don't work out. They will struggle to a greater degree when trying to reach a goal. A pessimist is defeated before they even try to reach a goal. Obviously, this personality should be avoided, and if you think you may have this personality, focus on your little accomplishments to reinforce your belief that better days are on the horizon. To find out who you're working with, just ask them what are some of your goals for the future and how are you going to accomplish those goals. If they respond quickly with a smile, you're dealing with a perfectionist. If you get a response that is similar to, things will probably work out, you're dealing with an optimist, and a pessimist will act negatively to the whole question. People make the decision to purchase also based off of, what, of either cost, service, quality, or time. When making a purchase, I focus more on the price than any other factor. I value the quality of the product secondly, which is why I take a long time to make purchasing decisions. I have the personality type that is very hard to sell to, and I have this personality type because I feel I've been taken advantage of by salespeople in the past, and most cost-oriented buyers have as well. Most buyers have been dissatisfied more often in purchases based on one of the following cost, bad service, quality, or wasted time. So over time, they start to value those products which are either cheaper, provide the best customer service, quality level, or time savings. Just ask people what is the best purchase they've ever made to find out why they will purchase something. Then you have responsibility. People are either over-responsible, unresponsible, or somewhere in the middle. I have an even responsibility level. I don't have a problem allowing others to take a leadership position but also have no problem standing forward when I'm needed. Others thrive on taking on more responsibility. These people will go out of their way also to back up any promise they have made, even if it hurts themselves. The unresponsible types do everything they can to avoid being the leader. They want to be told what to do each step of the way. To find out who you're dealing with, just ask them. If they like being in charge, also you can find out a lot by asking if they thrive on being in charge. Then you have an overall trust style. People are either trusting, distrusting, paranoid, or naive. When being introduced to a new person, product, or way of doing things, I normally approach it with distrust. Remember, I'm highly motivated by doing things my own way. So you should have seen this coming. This causes me to question many things and may cause others to think I'm unapproachable. I know this about myself, so I force myself to be very open and approach others to break the ice quickly. Others trust everything and thrive on change. These are your friendly types that can pick up conversations with most anybody. These people are easy to take advantage of, and if they border on being naive, they may also be hurt often. On the other end of the distrusting spectrum, you'll find your paranoid types. They think everyone is out to get them. They believe heavily in conspiracies and have an issue with controlling their outbursts. You can find out who you're dealing with by asking, do you think government officials act in the people's best interest, or do you find most people trustworthy? In the next video, I'm going to go over how we specifically decide to respond through communication and work with others. Also, what we value, how we see ourselves, and the world. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Till next time.